Welcome back to the Real Story channel. Have you ever wondered how a tale of rejection and isolation finds its way to love and acceptance? In the final chapter of our story, we reach the culmination of a dance journey, a princess shunned for something beyond her control. Can strength and resilience overcome the stigmas of society? Will Aden find the love and acceptance she yearns for, despite her strong body odor that has made her undesirable to many? How does a tale filled with adversity end in triumph or does it? These are the questions we will answer in part 5 of Aden the Strong Body Odor Princess. Stay with us until the very end to witness the power of transformation and the beauty of seeing beyond the physical. You won't want to miss the conclusion to this unforgettable saga. Let's go. The coronation ceremony had dissolved into chaos as Prince Ukandu's fumbled attempt to lift the ancestral staff shattered the illusion of his destiny. Disappointment clung to the air like a shroud as the crowd dispersed. Ukandu and Odon retreated to their hut, the weight of their shattered dreams pressing down on them. Tears streamed down Odon's face, a stark contrast to the cold fury simmering within Ukandu. Meanwhile, in another part of the village, Chief Ueso awaited his son Oren's return. Oren had deliberately distanced himself from the coronation, unable to stomach the sight of Ukendu by his side. The memory of her rejecting his unwavering love for the supposed heir stung deeply. When Oren finally arrived, he was surprised to find his father radiating an uncharacteristic cheerfulness. Father, Oren greeted, his voice laced with apprehension, why the joyous expression? Chief Ueso's voice, seasoned by years of spiritual wisdom, replied, Son, I feel a momentous shift brewing, one that will alter our lives forever. His voice softened, I can't explain everything, but I implore you to approach this with an open mind and a humble heart. There's more to this royal bloodline than meets the eye. Oren was struck by the conviction in his father's voice, a voice seasoned by years of spiritual wisdom. He sighed in reluctant acceptance, All right, father, I'll accompany you and see where fate leads us. A satisfied smile spread across Chief Ueso's face as he patted Oren's shoulder, Wise choice, Arinza. Now get some rest. We have a momentous day ahead, and I have a feeling things are about to take a dramatic turn. As they retreated into their hut, a hush fell over the village, anticipation hanging heavy in the air, a collective breath held in wait for the impending revelation. Meanwhile, within the confines of the royal palace, Prince Ukendu seethed with rage and knowing humiliation. His entire life had been meticulously crafted for the singular moment to ascend the throne as High King. Now, that dream lay shattered at his feet. His arrogance, once a gilded shield, now manifested as a cruel lash. When unsuspecting maids arrived with his evening meal, Ukendu erupted in a torrent of verbal abuse, berating them as incompetent fools. His voice dripped with disdain as he showered them with a cold buffet of humiliation. But verbal abuse wasn't enough to satiate his festering rage. His fist and feet rained down upon the cowering maids, their screams swallowed by the thick silence of the palace. Utterly spent, he chased them from his presence, their whimpers echoing through the empty halls. News of Ukanda's violent outburst spread like wildfire through the palace, reaching the ears of Princess Aiden. A cold dread settled in her stomach. She knew she had to intervene before Ukandu's descent into madness spiraled further out of control. With a heavy heart, Princess Aiden approached Ukandu's chambers, a fragile hope flickering within her that she could be the voice of reason he desperately needed. As she entered the dimly lit room, she tentatively called out, My Prince. Her voice trailed off as she took in the wreckage around her, upturned furniture, spilled food, remnants of the prince's earlier tantrum. Ukandu himself sat slumped on a throne, his face contorted in a mask of fury. You dare come here, he spat, his voice laced with venom, this is all your fault. You brought this curse upon me. Aiden flinched, fear prickling at her skin. This wasn't the Ukandu she knew, the man she had chosen over Oren's unwavering love. 
This was a stranger consumed by bitterness and rage. Ukendo, please, she pleaded, taking a tentative step closer, we can find a way through this. It's not over yet. He scoffed, a humorless sound devoid of warmth. Over. Over my birthright, my destiny, all snatched away because of you. He gestured wildly around the room, look at what you've done. Turn my world into this wreckage. Shame burned in Aiden's throat as a horrifying realization dawned on her. In her blind ambition to become queen, she had unwittingly contributed to the chaos. Not only had she hurt Orin, but she had also failed to see the darkness festering within Ukendu. Now, she was trapped, bound to a man teetering on the edge of a precipice. In a barely audible whisper, she tried to defend herself, acknowledging that it wasn't entirely her fault. The truth hung heavy in the air, a bitter pull she had to swallow. Ukanda rose, fueled by dangerous energy, his movements filled with intense purpose. He stood tall above her, his eyes filled with a terrifying intensity. Don't lie to me, Adon. You are the embodiment of misfortune. From the moment you entered my life, everything went wrong. Tears welled up in Aiden's eyes, regret settling in her gut. Memories of Aaron's gentle smile and unwavering support resurfaced, contrasting sharply with the man standing before her. She had cast aside Aaron for a crown that now seemed to mock her. Ukanda roughly grabbed her arm, his grip painfully tight. Get out, he roared. Leave before I do something I'll regret. Adon stumbled back, tears streaming down her face, a choke sob escaping her lips. She turned and fled the room, the once opulent palace halls now feeling like a suffocating cage echoing with the consequences of her choices. She ran blindly through the palace grounds, the cool night air offering little solace. The weight of her mistakes pressed down on her, a crushing burden she could no longer ignore. As she reached the edge of the palace gardens, she collapsed under the shade of a weeping willow, its cascading branches mirroring her own cascading tears. In the quiet of the night, under the watchful gaze of the moon, Adon allowed herself to fully confront the consequences of her actions. The image of Erin's kind eyes filled with unspoken hurt haunted her. The path she had chosen, paved with ambition and deceit, had led her to a desolate wasteland of regret. But amidst the desolation, a flicker of hope remained. The call for a blood test, the possibility that the true heir might be revealed, offered a glimmer of a chance at redemption. Perhaps, just perhaps, fate would offer her a way to right her wrongs. Dawn broke, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink. Odon emerged from her tearful refuge beneath the willow, her eyes puffy and red-rimmed. The weight of the previous night still clung to her, but a newfound resolve simmered beneath the surface. She wouldn't succumb to despair. The blood test loomed as a potential turning point. She had to find Aaron, to gauge his reaction and perhaps seek his forgiveness. Ignoring the whispers and curious glances from palace staff, Odon ventured through the once familiar corridors that now felt alien, a constant reminder of her shattered dream. Finally, she reached the village outskirts and spotted Aaron tending to his crops. His back was straight, his movements purposeful. A pang of longing shot through Aiden, a stark reminder of the love she had cast aside. Taking a deep breath, she called out, Aaron. He turned, his eyes widening in surprise, a kaleidoscope of emotions flickering across his face, anger, hurt, and finally settling into cautious neutrality. Aiden, he acknowledged simply, his voice devoid of warmth. I need to speak with you, Aiden blurted out, her voice raw with emotion. Shame threatened to consume her again, but she pushed it down. Aaron studied her for a long moment, his silence weighing heavily. Finally, he sighed and gestured towards a nearby tree, saying, All right, speak your mind. Aaron said as dawn sank down beneath the shade, her heart pounding against her ribs. She poured out her heart, confessing her ambition, her naivety, and her deep regret. 
She spoke of Ukendo's descent into madness, the fear that coiled in her stomach. Aaron listened patiently, his face unreadable. When she finished, a long silence stretched between them, broken only by the chirping of birds. I don't know what to say, then, Aaron finally said, his voice low. The path you chose led you here. It's your burden to bear. His words stung, but Odon knew they were true. She hadn't expected forgiveness, not yet. But a flicker of hope remained. The blood test, she started, her voice gaining strength. There's a chance, a chance the true heir might be revealed. Aaron's eyes narrowed. And what then, he asked. I don't know, Adon admitted honestly. But if it is you, Aaron, I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Perhaps then I can begin to forgive myself. Aaron studied her for a long moment, his gaze searching her face. Finally, a faint smile played on his lips, a hint of the old Aaron. The ancestors will decide the heir, he said softly. But forgiveness, that's a different story. We'll see what the future holds, Odon. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving Odon with a sliver of hope and a heavy heart. The blood test loomed, a potential catalyst for change. But the path to redemption, she knew, would be long and arduous. The day of the blood test arrived, a tense anticipation gripping the entire village. Men of all ages lined up, a nervous energy crackling in the air. Odon stood on the periphery, her gaze fixed on Aaron. He stood tall, a quiet confidence radiating from him despite the obvious weight of the moment. Chief Yuzo, his face etched with the wisdom of years, presided over the ceremony. A specially selected elder, adorned with intricate body paint and wielding a bone blade, approached each man with a swift, practiced movement. The elder drew a single drop of blood, letting it fall onto a smooth black stone. The stone, imbued with ancestral magic, would react only to the blood of the true heir. One by one, men stepped forward, their blood failing to elicit any response from the stone. Disappointment clouded their faces as they stepped aside. Finally, it was Aaron's turn. He took a deep breath, his eyes meeting Aiden's for a fleeting moment. Then, with a steady hand, he offered his arm. The elder drew the blood, a single crimson bead glistening on the blade as it fell onto the black stone. A hush fell over the crowd, a tense silence stretching for what felt like an eternity. Then, a faint white luminescence bloomed around the blood droplet, growing brighter. By the second, a collective gasp rippled through the crowd. Chief Yuzo, his eyes wide with awe, confirmed the impossible. The ancestors had spoken. Aaron, the unassuming villager, was the true heir. His blood carried the undeniable mark of royalty. Cheers erupted, a wave of jubilation washing over the village. Aaron, however, remained composed, a quiet acceptance gracing his features. He looked at Odon, a hint of sadness mingling with the dawning realization of his destiny. News of the revelation spread like wildfire, reaching the ears of a now isolated Ikendu. Rage, like a venomous serpent, coiled around his heart. He refused to believe it. He, the heir groomed since birth, cast aside. The thought was unbearable. Driven by his fury, Ukendu stormed out of the palace, intent on confronting Aaron. He found the newly proclaimed heir surrounded by a joyous crowd, villagers congratulating him, their faces alight with hope. Ukendu pushed through the throng, his voice a roar. This is a farce. You, a mere peasant, cannot be the heir. Aaron turned, his gaze steady. The ancestors have spoken, Ukendu. Their will is not to be questioned. Ukendu's face contorted with rage. He lunged at Aaron, his fist aimed for a vicious blow. But before it could connect, a strong hand clamped on his shoulder. It was Chief Yuzo, his eyes blazing with a quiet fire. Enough, Ukendu, the chief said, his voice surprisingly firm. 
Your path has led you astray. Accept defeat with dignity. Ukando struggled against the chief's grip, but his strength seemed to wane as quickly as his arrogance had risen. Shame, a bitter pill he refused to swallow for so long, finally washed over him. He slumped to his knees, his head hung low. The joy of celebration continued, albeit with a somber undercurrent. Aaron, the true heir, stood at the center, a reluctant yet determined leader. As the initial shock subsided, whispers of Odon's role in the past began to circulate. Shame burned hot in Odon's cheeks. She knew she had to face Aaron, to seek his forgiveness for the pain she had caused. With a pounding heart, she approached him, her voice barely a whisper. Aaron, she started, I am truly sorry. Aaron stopped her, his gaze meeting hers. The past is the past, Odon, he said gently. Right now, there's a kingdom to rebuild and a path forward to forge. Perhaps together, we can find a way to heal the wounds of the past. Odon's heart swelled with a mixture of relief and gratitude. This wasn't a complete forgiveness, but it was a start. A chance to redeem herself and play a role, however small, in shaping the future and building a brighter tomorrow. As Aaron, the true heir, prepared to ascend the throne, a new chapter unfolded. One with the promise of unity, healing, and perhaps even love that had blossomed. A new chapter emerged, rising from the ashes of regret at the coronation ceremony for Aaron, now King Aaron. The frown on his face reflected a joyous yet subdued affair. The village, still reeling from the revelation and Ukanda's descent, celebrated their new leader with a reverence tinged with caution. Chief Yuzo, ever humble, addressed the crowd, promising to rule with fairness and compassion. Adon, cloaked in a simple blue dress, stood at the edge of the throng. Her relief was belied by Aaron's ascension, and the knowing guilt of knowing forgiveness wouldn't come swiftly. She spotted Chief Yuzo, his weathered face etched with a knowing smile. I forgive you, Adon, the chief said, his voice raspy with age. But forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. Prove yourself worthy, child. Walk by the king's side. Mend the rifts you caused. His words were both a bomb and a challenge. Adon approached Aaron, who stood overlooking the jubilant crowd. Your majesty, she began, her voice trembling slightly. Aaron turned, a hint of sadness lingering in his eyes. Adon, there's no need for formalities, not yet at least, he said. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. His throat tightened, but determination filled his voice. But I want to help. Let me serve you and the kingdom in any way I can. Aaron studied her for a long moment, his gaze searching her soul. Finally, a flicker of understanding softened his features. The kingdom needs healers, Adon, he said, his voice gentle. Those who can mend not just bodies but also broken trust. Perhaps you can start there. Hope kindled in Odon's chest. It wasn't a return to their past love, but a chance at a new beginning. She bowed her head, a silent vow escaping her lips. She would dedicate herself to healing, not just the kingdom, but also the fractured bond between them. Meanwhile, Ukendu remained confined to his quarters, a shadow of his former self. Shame gnawed at him relentlessly. One day, a knock on his door startled him. It was Odon. Ukando hesitated, the urge to lash out warring with a flicker of curiosity. Finally, he allowed her in. What do you want, he spat, his voice laced with bitterness. Odon stood tall, her gaze unwavering. I come not to gloat, Ukando, but to offer help. You are a prince fallen but not forgotten. The kingdom needs your skills, your strength. Will you allow me to guide you towards redemption? Odon asked, her voice firm. Ukendu stared at her, surprised by her audacity. Yet, a seed of hope buried deep within him began to sprout. 
Perhaps there was a way to salvage his legacy, a way to contribute even if not as king. Very well, Adon, he finally rasped. Lead the way. But know this, forgiveness is a gift I may never be able to offer. Adon smiled sadly. I understand. But sometimes, the path to redemption begins with a single step. With that, Adon and Ukendu, two figures bound by their past mistakes, stepped out into the palace courtyard. The sun peeked through the clouds, casting a hopeful light on their uncertain journey towards a new future for the kingdom of Ethol, once shrouded in doubt. Now, they embraced the possibility of healing, unity, and perhaps even a love story. Rewritten with redemption at its heart, King Orin ushered in a period of peace and prosperity for Ethel. He ruled with a steady hand, guided by his inherent compassion and chief user's wisdom. True to her word, Odon thrived in her new role as head healer. Her reputation for empathy and skill grew, slowly mending the wounds of the past. One sweltering afternoon, a frantic messenger arrived at the palace, his face etched with worry. A mysterious illness had swept through a remote village bordering a treacherous mountain range. The villagers, stricken with a high fever and a debilitating cough, grew weaker by the day. Aaron, ever the dutiful king, assembled his most trusted advisers, the healers led by Aeon. They huddled close, their faces grim as they deciphered the messenger's report. The symptoms pointed towards the whispering death, a legendary plague whispered about in harsh tones by old folks. It was said to have ravaged Ethel generations ago, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. Fear threatened to grip the kingdom, but Aeon remained resolute. We cannot abandon our people, he declared, his voice firm. A rescue party must be assembled. We will fight this illness with every resource at our disposal. Volunteers readily stepped forward, their courage fueled by a newfound sense of unity. Recognizing the dangers of the mountain pass, Orin insisted on leading the expedition himself. Odon, her heart pounding with a mix of trepidation and determination, volunteered to accompany him. The journey was arduous, the unforgiving terrain testing their physical strength while the ever-present threat of the illness gnawed at their minds. Days bled into nights as they traversed the treacherous path, their resolve hardening with each passing hour. Finally, they reached the stricken village. The sight that greeted them was heart-wrenching. The once vibrant community lay shrouded in an unsettling silence. The few remaining villagers, frail and feverish, looked up at them with a flicker of hope in their eyes. Odon and the healers immediately set to work, tending to the sick with a renewed sense of purpose. Aaron, ever the leader, rallied the villagers, organizing tasks and fostering a spirit of resilience. Days turned into weeks as they battled the relentless illness. Odon, drawing upon her knowledge of herbs and ancient remedies passed down through generations, tirelessly treated the afflicted. Amidst her efforts, she noticed a peculiar flower clinging to the rocky slopes near the village. Its petals shimmered with a vibrant purple, radiating an otherworldly glow. Driven by a hunch, Odon meticulously studied the flower, exploring its properties and potential medicinal value. After days of research and experimentation, Adon brewed a concoction using the flower and other local herbs. The first dose administered to a critically ill villager showed a glimmer of improvement. Hope, like a fragile flame, flickered anew with cautious optimism. Adon distributed the concoction throughout the village, and slowly, the tide began to turn. The villagers regained their strength, the coughs subsided, and the fever receded. The whispering death, once a terrifying legend, began to lose its grip. News of their success reached Ethel, sparking wild celebrations. King Ein and Ardon, hailed as heroes, returned to the capital not just as a king and his healer but as symbols of hope and unwavering courage. In the aftermath of the crisis, a newfound respect bloomed between Ein and Ardon. They had faced danger and despair together, forging a bond built on mutual trust and a shared commitment to their people. 
While the embers of their past love remained, a deeper understanding and a quiet companionship took root. One starlit night, Ayn found Odon tending to the palace gardens. He sat beside her, a comfortable silence settling between them. You saved them, Odon, he said, his voice filled with admiration. You saved not just the villagers but perhaps the entire kingdom. Odon smiled faintly. We did it together, your majesty. Eren chuckled softly. Perhaps it's time we dispensed with formalities, Odon. Call me Ein. A blush crept up Aiden's cheeks. Ein, she whispered, the name tasting sweet on her tongue. They sat in comfortable silence for a while, the weight of the past acknowledged yet transcended. The future stretched before them, an open book waiting to be written. The kingdom of Ethel, once fractured by ambition and betrayal, now embraced a brighter chapter. One where a king and his healer, bound by shared experiences and newfound respect, would lead their people into an era of peace and prosperity. Ten years flowed by like a gentle river. Their rhythm was marked by the changing seasons and the quiet hum of a kingdom thriving under Ein's just rule. Odon, once burdened by regret, had blossomed into a revered healer, her touch a beacon of hope for the people of Ethel. One crisp autumn morning, a commotion erupted in the palace courtyard. A foreign dignitary, adorned in silks from a faraway land, requested an audience with the king. The air crackled with nervous anticipation. Ethel rarely received visitors from beyond its mountain borders. Aaron, ever the diplomat, received the envoy in the Grand Hall. The visitor, a woman with eyes as sharp as obsidian and a regal bearing, introduced herself as Alera, the ambassador from the neighboring kingdom of Idris. Your Majesty, Alera began, her voice a melodic purr. Idris faces a grave threat. A monstrous creature, a fire-breathing serpent from ancient law, has awakened and terrorizes our lands. We plead for your assistance. A hush fell over the room. Legends spoke of such creatures, but most dismissed them as mere bedtime stories. Yet the urgency in Alara's eyes and the tremor in her voice painted a different picture. Ayn's brow furrowed, and he exchanged a worried glance with Odon, who stood discreetly by his side. The threat was real, and Ethel had to prepare for such a formidable foe. We shall consider your request, esteemed ambassador, Aaron finally declared, his voice firm. However, a matter of such gravity requires careful deliberation. Alara bowed her head in acknowledgement. We understand, your majesty, but time is of the essence. The serpent's fiery breath devours entire villages, leaving only ash in its wake. The weight of the ambassador's words pressed heavily on Ayn. He knew he couldn't ignore the plight of a neighboring kingdom, yet sending his people into battle against a mythical creature was a daunting prospect. Days were spent in heated discussions. Advisors argued for caution, while some nights, their blood thrumming with the call to adventure, urged intervention. Odon, ever the pragmatist, suggested gathering intel. Understanding the creature's weaknesses could be the key to victory. A daring plan took shape. A small scouting party, led by Ayn's most trusted knight, Sir Gareth, would venture into Idris to gather information about the fire serpent. Odon, with her skills as a healer potentially invaluable against an unknown threat, volunteered to join the mission. Ayn hesitated, a flicker of worry crossing his face. The journey would be perilous, and the thought of Odon facing such danger gnawed at him. Yet, he saw the steely resolve in her eyes, a reflection of the same courage she had shown countless times before. Be careful, Adon, he said finally, his voice a low murmur. Adon met his gaze, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. Always, Ein, she replied. And you, your majesty, may fortune favor us all. With a heavy heart and a resolute spirit, Aaron watched as Odon and the scouting party disappeared beyond the horizon, embarking on a journey that would not only decide the fate of Idris but perhaps rewrite the legend of the fire serpent and solidify the bond between a king and his healer. 
The journey to Idris was fraught with danger. The once vibrant lands they had seen in travel logs were now a desolate picture of destruction. Villages lay smoldering, their inhabitants either fleeing or victims of the serpent's fiery breath. Adon, her heart heavy with the devastation, used her knowledge of herbs to treat the injured survivors they encountered. Her gentle touch and calming presence brought a sliver of solace amidst the chaos. Sir Gareth, a seasoned warrior, admired her courage and skill, a respect that blossomed into a silent camaraderie. Finally, they reached the base of Mount Ignis, a dormant volcano spewing plumes of smoke. The reported lair of the serpent. Fear, like a tangible presence, settled over the group. Even the bravest knights gulped nervously. Odon, her nerves on edge, suggested a reconnaissance mission. She, along with two agile scouts, volunteered to scale the treacherous slopes and observe the creature from a distance. The climb was arduous, the air thick with sulfurous fumes that stung their nostrils. Finally, they reached a vantage point overlooking a vast crater. There, coiled amidst the molten rock, lay a truly awe-inspiring sight. The fire serpent was even larger than legend described, its scales shimmering with an infernal glow. Each exhale erupted in a plume of fire, illuminating the cavern like a furnace. But amidst the terror, Adon noticed a detail no one else had mentioned. The serpent writhed in pain, its movement sluggish. It cradled a massive, throbbing claw, its scales blackened and blistered. Returning to Sir Gareth, Adon shared her observation. The creature is injured, she declared, her voice filled with newfound hope. That's why it attacks villages. It's desperate for sustenance, driven mad by the pain. An idea sparked in Sir Garrett's mind. Perhaps a cure, not a fight, is the answer. He relayed this thought back to King Aaron via a magical messenger bird. Days turned into weeks as Aaron, his advisors, and Ordon strategized. They scoured ancient texts seeking remedies for burns and pain. Ordon, drawing upon her knowledge of plants, concocted a special salve infused with cooling herbs and pain-numbing agents. Finally, a plan was formed. A contingent of skilled archers, led by Sir Gareth, would create a diversion, drawing the serpent's attention. Odon, disguised as a harmless herbivore, would sneak closer and apply the salve to the wounded claw. It was a risky maneuver, but they only hoped to subdue the beast without bloodshed. The battle raged at the foot of Mount Ignis. Arrows rained down, drawing the serpent's fury. Odon's heart pounded to a frantic rhythm as she snuck past the fiery breath, the salve clutched tightly in her hand. Reaching the wounded claw, she had a fleeting moment of terror as the creature's fiery gaze seemed to pierce through her disguise. But fueled by a desperate hope, she managed to apply the salve before scrambling for cover. The effect was immediate. The serpent roared in surprise. The pain momentarily abetted, and the serpent lowered its head, sniffing at its injured limb. The fiery glow in its eyes dimmed. Seeing this, Sir Gareth and his archers ceased their attack. A tense silence descended upon the battlefield. Then, a most unexpected thing happened. The serpent, its fiery rage replaced by a whimper of pain, unfurled its massive body and slithered back into the volcanic crater. News of the successful mission reached Ethel, met with wild jubilation. Odon and Sir Gareth returned as heroes, their unconventional strategy hailed as a triumph of wit over brute force. King Aaron, his heart brimming with pride and relief, greeted them personally. A celebration erupted in the palace, a testament to the unlikely alliance that had saved Idris. As the festivities reached their peak, Aaron approached Aiden, his gaze filled with quiet gratitude. You saved countless lives, Aiden, he said, his voice low. Not just in Idris, but here too. You showed us that courage can come in many forms. Adon smiled, warmth spreading through her chest. We did it together, Aaron, she replied. Their eyes met, 
a silent understanding passing between them. The bond they shared had deepened, forged in the fires of shared experience and a newfound respect for each other's strengths. The past, though not forgotten, no longer cast a shadow over their present. The legend of the fire serpent was rewritten. It became a tale not of destruction, but of compassion and courage. And in the kingdom of Ethel, a king and his healer, their destinies intertwined, looked towards a future filled with hope, unity, and perhaps a love story finally kindled from the ashes of regret. Years flowed by like a peaceful river under Aaron's reign. Ethel prospered, its coffers overflowing from trade with a grateful Idris, forever bonded by their shared battle against the fire serpent. Aiden remained a revered healer, her touch a beacon not just for physical ailments but also for the emotional scars left by past conflicts. One crisp spring morning, a tremor shook the palace, rattling windows and sending a jolt of surprise through the inhabitants. News soon arrived from the border. A tremor unlike any felt before, originating deep within the forbidden whispering woods, a vast ancient forest shrouded in mystery. Legend spoke of the woods as a place teeming with magical creatures and guarded by powerful spirits. No human dared venture in, for those who did never returned. Yet the tremors grew stronger with each passing day, causing unease to settle over Ethel. Aaron, ever the dutiful king, called upon his advisers, Adon and Sir Gareth. They shared a glance, a silent acknowledgement of their success. The forest seemed to stir around them, no longer shrouded in an ominous stillness. As they made their way back to Ethel, a sense of peace settled over the land. The tremors were now nothing but a distant memory. Upon their return, King Aaron greeted them with a mixture of relief and curiosity. Odon recounted their journey, explaining the discovery of the wounded ancient oak and their efforts to heal it. Aaron listened intently, a newfound respect shining in his eyes as he realized the depth of Aiden's wisdom and courage. The news of their triumph spread quickly throughout the kingdom, filling the hearts of the people with hope and gratitude. Aiden's reputation as a healer and guardian of the natural world soared to new heights. Her touch was now believed to hold the power to mend not just bodies, but the very fabric of the world itself. In the years that followed, Ethel flourished under Aaron's wise rule. Its people lived in harmony with the land and the creatures that inhabited it. Aiden continued her work as a healer, her bond with the Whispering Woods growing ever stronger. And as the kingdom celebrated a newfound era of peace and prosperity, Aiden and Aaron stood side by side, their bond forged through adversity and shared triumphs, a testament to the enduring power of courage, compassion, and the unbreakable spirit of Ethel. As she witnessed the kingdom's turmoil unfold, the disappearance of King Aaron had cast a shadow over Ethel, leaving its people unsettled and vulnerable. Odon knew that she had to act, not only for the sake of the kingdom but also for the men she loved. Gathering her resolve, Odon immersed herself in her duties as a healer, tending to the physical and emotional wounds of the people. But her mind was consumed with thoughts of Aaron, her heart heavy with worry. She couldn't shake the feeling that he was still out there, waiting to be found. Meanwhile, rumors continued to swirl, painting a grim picture of Aaron's fate. Some whispered foul play, while others spoke of treachery within the kingdom's walls. Odon refused to entertain such notions, holding on to the belief that Aaron was alive and in need of her help. Driven by determination, Odon turned to her allies for support. Together with Sir Gareth and a small group of loyal followers, she embarked on a quest to uncover the truth behind Aaron's disappearance. Their journey took them across vast landscapes and through perilous obstacles, each step bringing them closer to the answers they sought. As they ventured deeper into the unknown, Aiden's resolve never wavered. She drew strength from her unwavering faith in Aaron and the deep bond they shared. And when they finally reached the hidden valley, hope blossomed within her heart like a flower in bloom. But their journey was far from over. In the tranquil village nestled among the mountains, Adon sensed a stirring of unrest beneath the surface of peace. 
A simmering tension hinted at the challenges that lay ahead. With determination in her eyes, Odon knew that she would stop at nothing to uncover the truth and bring Eren home. For in the face of uncertainty and adversity, love was her guiding light, illuminating the path forward and giving her the strength to persevere. And as she stood on the brink of the unknown, Odon knew that she would face whatever trials lay ahead with courage, resilience, and an unwavering belief in the power of love to conquer all. One evening, as she wandered through the palace gardens, a lone figure emerged from the shadows. It was Sir Gareth, his face etched with worry. Odon, he began, his voice low. I found something. He handed her a worn leather satchel, the royal insignia barely visible through the dust. It was hidden in a secret compartment within the king's chambers. I only just discovered it. Aiden's hands trembled as she untied the satchel. Inside, a single folded map lay nestled amongst a few personal trinkets. Unfurling it, her breath hitched. The map depicted a rugged uncharted mountain range bordering the kingdom's northern frontier, a region known for its treacherous terrain and rumored to be inhabited by a reclusive tribe. A spark of hope ignited within Odon. Could this be the clue she had been searching for? Was Eren alive but lost somewhere in those unforgiving mountains? A determination hardened in her eyes. She wouldn't wait for others to act. In the village square, a familiar figure stood amidst the throng, his back turned. Aiden's breath caught in her throat. The man wore simple clothes, his hair streaked with silver, but the broad frame and regal bearing were unmistakable. It was Aaron. Aiden, she called out his name, her voice hoarse with emotion. Aaron turned, his eyes widening in disbelief. A wave of emotions, shock, relief, and a flicker of joy washed over his face. The reunion was tearful and joyous. Aaron explained how he had been ambushed while on a solo scouting mission near the border, injured and disoriented. He stumbled upon the hidden valley, inhabited by a peaceful tribe who nursed him back to health. He had chosen to stay, finding solace in their simple life and a sense of peace he hadn't known before. Yet, a pang of longing for his kingdom and the people he ruled flickered in his eyes. A difficult decision lay before them. Aaron, his spirit renewed, was ready to return to his duties. Yet, a part of him yearned for the tranquility of the hidden village. Adon, too, had to face her own truth. Her feelings for Aaron had deepened during their perilous journey, but a life by his side as king wasn't what she desired. In the end, with a heavy heart, Aaron decided to relinquish the throne. He appointed a wise and respected advisor as his successor, ensuring a smooth transition of power. He returned to the hidden village, not as a king, but as a man seeking peace. Adon, by his side, not as a queen, but as a healer who had found her own path. News of his return and subsequent decision to leave the throne spread through Ethel like wildfire. Some were disappointed, others relieved, but most understood the importance of a ruler finding their true purpose. Ethel, under the leadership of the new king, continued to prosper, forever marked by Aaron's reign of compassion and wisdom. Odon and Aaron, nestled in their newfound home amidst the serenity of the hidden valley, built a life together, a testament to the enduring power of love and the courage to follow one's heart. The tale of Aaron and Odon is a reminder that true leadership often lies not in clinging to power but in knowing when to let go. It is a story about the unexpected twists of fate, the importance of self-discovery, and the enduring power of love that can bloom even amidst the ruins of ambition. And finally, it is a testament to the fact that happiness, like a hidden valley, can sometimes be found in the most unexpected of places. Thank you for watching, see you in the next updated videos.